Think Realty Nation, it's your host, Abby Golhar. Welcome to the Think Realty Podcast. I'm excited to be here because one of the things that I, quite frankly, always need help with is picking out the right colors for my properties and really following the trends, right? Whether, and this is important for you flippers, this is important for you single family rental owners, even if you own multifamily real estate. You can't just go with your dry and drab colors anymore, right? Your tenants expect more. And the homeowners that are going to buy your property, this stuff matters. You have to, listen, I'm a guy, we never get, we never get our colors right ever, period. And I <laughs> suck at it. And so when I need help, I turn to people like Sue because she can really offer that clarity for me. And so, you know, I don't have to like think about it. And so this yep. is going to be an awesome conversation uh, for those of you that are really interested in making your uh, properties pop from a resale perspective and a long-term investment perspective in the case that you're renting. This podcast can't do it without our sponsor for today, um, Narada Real Estate Investments, your premier source for cash flow investment property. Visit www.turnkeyrealestateinvestments.com. <laughs> So let's get into it. Sue, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, likewise. Uh, so give us a little background. Who are you, what you do, and why should real estate investors care about color? So I'm Sue Wadden. I'm the director of color marketing for Sherwin-Williams. Um, I've been kicking around in this role um, for a long time, almost 20 years. So I know a lot about color, and I know a lot about the whys behind it. Um, but honestly, I think... I think if we can't just put too fine a point on it, everybody is busy, right? We all have jobs to do and, and things to get done. And so oftentimes color gets overlooked in a property because it's difficult. Not everybody knows how to do that. So it's a great idea to look to a paint company like a Sherman Williams uh, for advice, right? How to, because part of my job is making sure that we're up on all the trends and we communicate that um, to our to our customers, right? Our super valuable um, commercial accounts, right? They, they paint a lot of properties. And so, um, it's, it's part of our, like kind of mantra, if you will, um, to pick great color. So that's, that's my primary function in this role. Um, it's a really, really super cool job. And, um, yeah, I, I could go on. I suppose you probably want to ask me a question, but I could just, yeah, you, up, we, we, we can keep going. Time. So from a, from a COVID perspective, Mm -hmm. From a COVID perspective, do people still care? Or, yes. or are they just like, hey, whatever, just give me like a COVID, like vomit orange, and, mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm fine with that. Like, yeah, maybe not that one. No, okay, no, right. no. I think now, I think now <laughs> more than ever, color is vital. So yes. um, it's been an insane six months, five months, whatever, you know, however you want to classify really the chaos. Yeah. And, and from a trend forecasting perspective, it's like turn design on its heels, you know? But I'm, I'm an internal optimist, and I think that design is going to kind of see us through uh, what comes next because we are at the forefront of transition. So here's an example. We don't have office environments and home environments now, right? Those things are merged together. So how, how do you help people create like a sanctuary space where you can live your life, but then also, you know, turn the corner and that's your work. Um, and so color has a a huge role in that um, sort of design philosophy um, where people want to personalize their spaces. They want it to feel like when they go to work, which is their living room, right? Or yep. their office or their den, that it feels different from their home environment. And color is a key component of that, whether it's creating a nurturing space that's dark, richer color, or maybe something creative that's a little brighter and a little more playful, or maybe something that's really focused, like a a muted gray, right? Where your attention needs to be on the work at hand and you have to eliminate the distractions of kids and pets and, and weird furniture and, uh, you know, all those things have just kind of turned us on our heels. And so I think it's fair to say now more than ever, we're looking at color to kind of re-inspire us and sort of see us into the next step. So one of, my, one of the things that I was thinking about for a while is I do a lot of uh, podcasting from home also. And I do a lot of Zoom webinars and things like that. And so mm -hmm. if I even had a partial accented wall that's going into a corner um, yes. that then leads to a window, I'm like, as a, as a user of color, I would say, you know what? Take that piece that I'm using, paint it like 
if I'm a minimalist, maybe pin it, uh, paint it that um, muted gray. Or yeah. if I want a little bit of a louder punch, then maybe that like, uh, like a brighter burnt orange color. That really makes me into my like super creative zone. And then exactly. even when I, you know, and even what, if I decide to turn the camera to my desk, it still looks fantastic. Agreed. Like we're all little mini broadcasters now, right? Zoom environment has yeah. changed. I mean, can you remember like those first days when everybody was on a video conference and people were like hiding their face? We we're just not used to it. And so, yeah, our backdrops are becoming more and more important, which you can see this very bright yellow behind me, which I'm in the process of painting um, because it's too yellow. I just moved into this office now that I'm, I'm kind of, we're back, um, we're back at our headquarters. And uh, I can't see color with this yellow behind me. So I need it to be much more neutral. So yeah. again, that's in, that's how color in, impacts your environment. You know, if you, I look at, you know, various shades of color all day long. And so I need a neutral canvas. So like, that's just how it's appropriate to change color within my work environment. Um, so yeah, it's, vi it's vital, right? This conversation we could just continue to talk about. Um, but I would love to say like, you look to your resources. Sometimes it's overwhelming to go try to select something for a property or a homeowner, which is the right color. There's so much choice out there. It's kind of the paradox of choice. A company like Sherwin will curate those collections down for you. For instance, we have like a trend forecast that we put together. It's called Color Mix Every Year. And those are, those are trending colors, right? Those are colors. They're not just my favorite colors. I don't just pull them out of the sky and be like, oh, I like burnt orange. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's research. It's like a really thoughtful process. So we analyze what's going on in design, what's going on in um, product design, furniture design, wood finishes. We gather all this information and we sort of uh, disseminate what's going to be the right colors for the upcoming year. And that becomes a trend report, which is a really, really cool process. And then you can look to those trending colors to understand that in 16 or 18 months, you're going to stroll into Pottery Barn or Target, and those colors are going to be on the products that people are buying. So it's it's a vital link kind of in the uh, forward thinking process of design. You know, designers want to be at the forefront of what's next. And I, I would say the same thing for real estate, right? You want to appeal to this audience that is looking for what's new, what's next, what's hot, what's what's relevant, and trend forecasts do that. So um, I think people probably don't understand often how they work or what their uh, purpose is, but that's that's really um, at the kind of kernel of, of forecasting. And it also is the, I mean, we can't ignore color, right? It is in everything that we do, even down to the clothing that we decide to wear every day or that day. Every and day. It's, it would be so dumb of us to say, well, just paint everything an eggshell white and we're, we're done. I think we have to start now, at least like one half of a wall needs to be set up for something. Some, like, something. It's got to be some type of work thing where folks say, well, I feel comfortable turning around. It looks cool. It looks neat instead of just throwing a virtual background on a, on a Zoom call, which just, ugh. Like it's, right. it's so gross. I mean, then you're like heads wonky. And then you look, I mean, I look like I have a really fat chin and I'm just like, wow, I need to go to Weight Watchers. Like, no, I don't need any of that. <laughs> well, color can help with that, but you know, it's, it's <laughs> right. me. So um, as we emerge into like, hopefully post COVID world fairly soon, yes. um, there's some key findings that we're, we've learned. Nature is inspiration and is going to be key. So like colors um, in the environment that you see we're understanding like psychologically that those colors have such a um, positive effect on well-being and sort of mindfulness. So like muted warm tones, um, browns, certainly terracottas, those pink beiges, like really earthy tones are going to be key in 2021 and moving forward because they're strong, strong associations with the positivity of nature, right? Climate change, all these big impending, I think that's one of the most interesting things about um, COVID was the, when everyone went in quarantine, the earth started to heal itself quickly, right? Mm -hmm. That is going to be a key indicator of design trends, um, you know, probably for the next 10 years. So I think that is like an easy way to bring color. And if you have a beautiful white wall and everything looks great, but you want to add some color, look to nature as your inspiration, certainly greens, right? 
blues, like sort of those anchor colors of nature's are easy bets um, to bring in for an accent wall. Look, let's let's talk about the rhythms of color because I was mm. I was looking at this. I'm just like this describes exactly what I would want in color. Yep. Uh, sanctuary encounter continuum and tapestry. Help me understand and like uh, some of the investors that will also be. We cater to this, and this podcast is designed for real estate investors, people that are right. always looking at buying. Right. This Properties. is yep. th this is a very interesting. These are interesting word choices, but. It makes me feel comfortable just reading the word. Oh, well, good. I like to hear that. So yeah. this is our trend forecast. So we talk about okay. this trend forecast that we put together every year. Well, for 2021, we're talking about the rhythm of color. And again, it's all super tied to nature. So yeah. as we emerge from COVID, we were trying to decide like what was the flavor and tone of these trend palettes. And it was really important to talk about nature. So the principles that we employ as designers to like bring nature into our home. There's things like biophilic design, um, creating those sanctuary spaces, which is one of the palette names, um, using like, you know, there's multi-generational considerations. That's our encounter palette talks about that. We're not just oftentimes living with um, single family or single unit homes. We've got grandparents and aunts and uncles and kids and, and pets, like there's multi-generational um, living situations that are happening now, people have lost their jobs, you know, they don't, I think there's not really a standard set standard anymore for housing, right? We've got all these different influences coming in, in a fast way, and they're kind of crashing in. So it's redefining what exactly is home. So that's what our encounter palette talks about. Um, tapestry is a, um, it's an explosion of creative expression. So I, I parlay it to we're, we're at home, we're scaling the walls because we're so sick of being inside how do you use color creatively to like express yourself and you can do that very e easily with like bolder brighter colors so that's what that collection talks about and then there's continuum continuum is um sort of technology where the natural world and technology sort of intertwine and i think that's a long-term look at how we are going to redefine the sense of home you know, if, if I'm if I'm a client and I'm looking for what's new, what's next in a kitchen, I'm looking for a smart home, right? I'm looking for technology. It maybe looks natural and it looks beautiful and it looks like polished marble or granite or sort of has that effect. But the technology and how we interact with technology is a key differentiator in how design is going to move forward for the home. So we have to make the investment in, you know, touch-free environments. Do you have um, voice controlled products like like that that next generation of where technology is going to take us? It used to be like, oh, this is the Jetsons, right? This is future state. This is 25 years from now. It's not really 25 years from now. It's soon, you know, and I think COVID was a huge pendulum switch, switch like shift in that direction. We need technology to take us safely into a future state, um, but we don't always want our technology to look techy. So that's what we talk about with this continuum palette. So at home, I, uh, my wife and I, we have a we have Alexa, and then Alexa's connected to our Roomba. And this is how lazy I've gotten. I instead of going to the Roomba app on my phone to turn on Roomba, I'll tell Alexa to tell Roomba to go clean up space. Right. I think but do you think that's lazy, or do you think that's efficient? Like I think that's efficient. I think. Right. I think that's. A, it's efficient. I guess I just haven't gotten there yet. I'm just like, okay, I could just go to the app and I can just press the button, but I can also see it, right? If I'm on my way out, I can say, you know, Alexa, do this and, you know, she'll do it and we're, we're off and running. So, Right. But if you start thinking about like touch-free environment, right? Post-COVID, yes. what does that mean? So you're walking into your house and it's voice activated and you can say front door open, it's Sue and the door opens and you've got a bunch of groceries in your hand and you don't have to touch anything and you're not yeah. contaminating anything. Like, I think it's really going to change how we look at home moving forward. Totally. And that's also going to be a lot of voice recognition, maybe even a lot of facial recognition there. I think that's exactly. some interesting tech that's already, uh, that needs to be integrated more with maybe uh, larger actions, like opening a door is a larger mechanical action. Um, so I think yep. that would be interesting to kind of see. Two questions. If I wanted to play safe, uh, if I wanted to play safe and I, I took a look at the color mix forecast and, uh, and all the work that you're doing with Sherman, uh, Sherman Williams, and just the resources, 
how do, is there like a safe color that I could just use and people would be happy with if I want to sell a property or rent a property? Is it like yeah. blues or beiges or pinks? Like if I just want to paint something neutral? So I would say this. So while designers are pushing neutral, like warm neutrals, beiges, yeah. grige, taupes, homeowners are still a little bit stuck in the gray universe. You know, like gray has been a really important color for like five, five, six years. So I would say if you sit squarely in that camp, somewhere between warmer grays and like warmer whites, yeah. you're going to, it's a safe bet that it's going to appeal to everybody. And okay. then accent colors you build from there, right? Depending on um, location is a great indicator. If you're in Florida, maybe the colors are a little different than they are in the Pacific Northwest. So I oftentimes use regional um, color to help me guide um, my decision making. Like I'm in Cleveland, and so we have really gray um, environments for half the year. And so I will sh sometimes shy away from a gray for an interior because it's it's chilly, especially when you look out the window and it's gray outside. So maybe I might choose a, a soft blue or a soft green uh, for a commercial space or a warmer white, like almost like a bone white. But if I'm in Florida where the light is so brilliant, you can pull off a gray and get a little more um, of those cooler tones. So, you know, again, there's resources to hand. I know I could go, I can, I go deep. No, it's it's <laughs> I go helpful. Deep on color. It's, um, it's, it's, it's are... helpful because for, for, for investors that are guys, yes, we don't get it. For yes. investors that are women, Y'all understand all of that. Uh, you can walk into a space, you'd be like, oh, that sucks, 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 sucks. This is great, right? Like, right. we need to change, right. change, change, change. And I'm like, okay, uh, this doorstep is not good. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of where I, I'm still. Um, yes. But I think this is really helpful. Um, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is a color called Anonymous. It's like a, it's a I didn't know that was a dark. color. You want me to show you? Yes. What's the I color got, Anonymous? I got, it's, I got my panda here. Yeah. Um, anonymous is a color it's a color it, so it's it's that color it's like this warm gray it looks it looks um blue gray on the screen but yeah. it's a warm gray it's beautiful beautiful that's my favorite it's the exterior of my house i have a hundred year old house that's painted in that color um wow. do I have a room inside no i painted over it um <laughs> yeah but i love it it's beautiful anyway that's my anonymous mine. yes i need to i need to write this down this is fantastic <laughs> All right, anonymous. I'm gonna tell my wife that. Hey, our entire the the, the we're gonna have this one color in the house somewhere. She's like, what is it called? It's anonymous. Anonymous. She's gonna be it's like, like first of all, color. Oh, it's great. All right. She's gonna, she's gonna be like, why are you being shady? Why are you not telling me? I'm like, it's anonymous. And she's like, well, right. that's not gonna help me. I still have to go pick out the paint at Sherwin Williams when we go paint. How can I? It's so vague. You're being anonymous about it. I'm like, it's the color. Like, it's the color. Kill me it's now. Uh, but it's, you know, I'm a guy. I, I don't know any better. Um, you, so You're learning. You're learning as we speak, right? Yes. You're welcome. I, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm taking the step in the right direction. And, <laughs> oh, that's good. and I think I'm doing, it's good, healthy for my relationship. So <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to just maybe a couple of steps and then, and then we'll transition out to my second segment that I got to do. But um, sure. when, it, when it comes to just a couple of initial steps that investors can take, what do you recommend? Is it taking a look at the color mix, the color mix report and seeing yes. like, or the forecast and seeing, hey, what's going on next year? What's going on this year? How do I adapt yes. my thinking? Because this is a critical component just as much as furniture and just the overall layout of the place. Um, color matters. It does matter. And color sells, right? So we often say that. So I would say this. First step is use the resources to hand. Um, trust your partner. So um, Sherman Williams is a great resource. You can find information online. You can certainly go in store. Um, you can contact a sales rep. I mean, we have lots of resources. So I would say do a little pre-work, right? And find out what's trending, what's hot, what's new. Um, and just remember, we're constantly doing that research for you. So you don't have to do it. So, you know, we want to be the trusted, uh, the trusted advisor, if you will. And then I would say, don't be afraid to take a little bit of a risk. Once you've got that advice, once you've got that good guidance, something that you can rely on, put some color in and don't just default to what's safe, which is sort of a white on white environment. Whether you invest in a, a soft neutral, whether it's a warm white or a grease or a, a tan even in some locations, um, understand that those colors will appeal to homeowners and people want, even if they're renting something, they want a customized space. They want to feel like they have 
uh, something invested even in a rental property. And so that idea of like customizing the home and creating this environment, you know, 15 years ago, it was maybe fine to just do turnkey. We're going to paint everything white because we're going to flip it in a year. That's mm -hmm. sort of gone, right? We understand that we want to, we're, we're living, we're working, we're um, having recreation within our home space. So it should be a little more customized. So those are my two long-winded responses. I, I, and use I, your resources, use your resources yes. and don't be afraid. So I just visited um, swcolorforecast.com. That's yes. Sherwin-Williams Color Forecast. Yeah, you got it. I downloaded the PDF and I'm already in love. Like the cyberspace, uh -huh. like this guy, this guy right That's there, cool. that yeah. palette is just so cool. And even like, even the next one, uh, which is tapestry. Yeah, I mean, you have like so many, so many different colors and ideas and things. It's just, it's, it's incredible. There are. So again, that's the resources. Use those resources. Yeah. You'll find something you love, um, and don't be, don't be afraid to jump in. Amazing. I feel like it's time, right? We've been, we've been skirting around neutrals for a long time. Like, go get excited about color because people are, um, and people need it. Wonderful. Sue, thank you so much for the time and for the insight. This is, uh, I mean, it's been pretty eye-opening for me with the entire, you know, for, for you being anonymous and all. Um, of course, of course. <laughs> Thank um, you so this much. This is great fun. Yeah, if you, uh, yeah, I, I, we've got color of the year coming. If you want to talk about that in a couple weeks, where I'm always available. Let's. <gasps> Can't let's, tell you about it now. It's not launched yet. Oh come on! No sneak peek. Uh uh. Is nope. it? Is it like? Is it okay? Is it a shade on anonymous? If it is, then I'm just. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Well, I can tell you it's not anonymous. I'll tell you that. It's not anonymous. That doesn't help me at all. <laughs> it's, not, it's none not. at all, but that's okay. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, it'd be fun to talk to you about it. So um, yeah. yeah, I enjoyed my time and thank you for having me. Of course. If we want to learn more, that's the website, swcolorforecast.com. Yes. Um, yep. Perfect. Well, Sue, thanks a lot. I certainly appreciate it. This has been fun. We'll have all right. You thank you so much. You got okay, it. talk to you. All right, thank you, Realty Nation. The next segment uh, is sponsored by Clint Coons, uh, brought to you by Clint Coons of Anderson Business Advisors, nationally recognized for providing bulletproof asset protection, tax, and business strategy advice to real estate investors. Go to getbulletprooftoday.com and receive Clint's book, Asset Protection for Real Estate Investors, for free while supplies last. So let's talk about saving on utilities during tenant turnovers. Uh, this is an article written by uh, Jeff Pepperney, and you can check it out at thinkrealty.com. He talks about three specific things. Number one, LED light bulbs. Number two, thermostat settings. You want to kind of keep that comfortable, but also if nobody's living in it, if there's nobody living in your unit, you don't need that unit to be completely chill, right? Like just common sense, like, oh my gosh, this is duh stuff. If nobody's living in the unit, why chill a house, a house? Why cool it down to like 68, 65 degrees? You don't need that. Keep it at like 78, 79, 80. It's not a big deal, right? It's totally fine. Uh, LED light bulbs. You're going to save a lot of money there too, and it just makes sense. Your LED light bulbs uh, generally will last between 25,000 and 50,000 hours compared to many other types of light bulbs. So maybe switch them around. I think that's not a bad idea. Air sealing and uh, insulation. And... Here's kind of an interesting, interesting thing about insulation. It will save you roughly between 15 and 20% on your overall, overall utility bills. So any way that you can save money as a long-term rental owner, you might as well check that out and do it. I'm all about it. So that's a wrap. I learned a lot about color, especially anonymous. I didn't even realize anonymous was, a, was like a thing. That's just, that's incredible to me. So if you have any questions, you want to get in touch, you want to tell us what colors you're using in your uh, rental properties and where you are, and also your flips and where you are. Uh, as Sue mentioned, there are, she gets inspired by the region that the property is in, and I think that's kind of interesting. So I'd like to put that idea to the test and see uh, if y'all are using different colors in different parts of the country, and if you are, which colors are they? If you want to shoot that over, go to thinkrealty.com, find an email address, uh, let them know, and then maybe we can even feature that color for the next Think Realty podcast. All right, that wraps it up for today. Uh, if, you have any, if you have any questions, you know how to get in touch. And um, this podcast was brought to you by Nevada Real Estate Investments. I uh, can't not make this podcast happen without the support of our uh, sponsors. So thank you so much for that. 
Nevada Real Estate Investments is your premier source for cash flow investment property. Visit www.turnkeyrealestateinvestments.com. Thank you, Realty Nation. Until next time, happy investing.